What's up? So today I want to show you guys what happens if you get a bounce check, right? Let's say you send out this invoice, then the customer gives you a check, and then you go, you take a little picture on your phone, then the check doesn't go through, it bounces, the bank charges you, and, and QuickBooks says it, it just goes all over. But this is what I'm gonna show you right here, right now. So I'm going to recreate the scenario and then guide you on what you should do to fix the salt scenario. So let's jump right into it. So the first thing we're gonna do is create the invoice, just like you would create the invoice. So you guys, if you don't know, in my lives, in my videos, I always use a chicken sandwich business as my example. I feel like it's very easy to talk about, very straightforward. So let's, we're using a chicken sandwich. So the first thing we need to do, and in every invoice that you should be doing, is you should always list your customer. So this time we're going to use mom, this is a brand new QuickBook, so we're gonna to have to add mom in there. If she has, if you're emailing this invoice out, um, you want your customer to pay with a credit card or bank transfer, then you would, put the, you would put their email in. But since we're only getting paid with a check, we can just leave it blank. Um, we're into the product and services. If you guys, now I entered this product and services on a previous video, so if you guys want to know how, hey, you know, how do I enter a product and service? Well, check out the previous videos. I just did that. Um, and just to real quick to go over this, right here where you see terms, terms pretty much how many days are you going to give them to pay the invoice? If it's due on receipt, that means hey, as soon as you receive this, or you <laughs> you see this, it's due today. Um, if it says due net 15, you can see it's due in 15 days. If it's due in 30 days, that's what that net 30 is. But for right now, we're going to put just due on receipt. And we're actually going to put this invoice in the past. So let's say it was on November 14th, which was my birthday. Hey, happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, cool. And then we're going to check this is tax because we sell chicken sandwiches and that it's a taxable service in the state of Texas. And that's what I say. So if you want to send this invoice, you will hit send, but for this purposes, we're going to hit save and close. Also, this share link, let's say you want to just send them the link or you want to send it to the phone. You can actually copy the link and it will send it to them. But for this purpose, we're going to hit save and close. Okay, boom. Now that invoice happened. So we can look on our profit and loss statement and you can see sales $5 because we sold a chicken sandwich. Um, and that's just because it's account receivable. So now let's say a couple of days later, mom paid us with that check. So we're gonna receive that check, we're gonna take a picture and we're gonna put it into our bank account. So let's look how we're going to record that in QuickBooks. We're gonna go over here where it says new. You're gonna hit receive payment, right? You're gonna type in your customer name, which is mom. As soon as you click that, hey, her invoice pops up. Look, from November 14th, that's my birthday. <laughs> so we're gonna click that invoice. This is the invoice that she paid. The payment method we're gonna push, she paid with a check. We're gonna put the check number, which is one. Hey, why not? Uh, and then where did the deposit to? Well, guess what? We're going to deposit it in our bank account. So we don't even have a bank account. So let's call this bank account. That's, that's the name of our bank. The name of our bank is bank account. Um, so when you're entering anything new, like a bank account, you can just say a bank type, you hit bank account, uh, we'll consider it a checking account. Uh, actually, let's, let's just leave it at checking. That seems simpler. Um, so we'll leave it at checking account and we'll just hit save and close. We got paid. Awesome. So now we just hit save and close. So now that we received the payment, you can see QuickBooks is going to record this in our bank account as $5 and 41 cents um this so this this checking account is not linked to anything typically most of you because it's just a, i just made this company i haven't linked the bank account um typically you you guys is quitbooks you're going to see two numbers right here you're going to see the actual bank balance and then you're going to see the quitbooks balance so quitbooks is always going to try to sync with that balance so let's say this is our first transaction ever in our entire business you just recorded, you just told QuickBooks that, hey, I, you have $5.41 coming, okay? So that check should come into your bank account as $5.41, and those two numbers will match. A lot, of problems, a lot of problems that I see in QuickBooks accounting files is those two numbers don't match because in some way that we slipped up on the process. So this is a very important that we understand the process, and I'm walking you through the process of how to record a bounce check. 
cool so we got our bounce check and then so let's look at let's look at um let's look what that looks like so we got our bounce check right so then we get this notification from our bank uh oh and we get this notification from our bank hey that check bounced unfortunately that check bounced and we're gonna charge you a twelve dollar fee what that's crazy but hey it happens so here's what we do in this situation we're gonna have to recreate a new invoice to send it to mom because we're gonna want to get our money back and then we're gonna have to record that transaction inside of QuickBooks that way our balances still matches so what's about to happen to the bank account we're gonna have to record that same exact thing so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create two new service items one is a bounce check the second one is a bounce check fee. So I'll show you what that looks like right now. So I'm going to go over here to sales. I'm going to go to products and services. So we're going to create a brand new service. We're going to go to here, hit new. We're going to hit non inventory, non inventory. And we're going to name this service bounce check. Okay, bounce check. I'll just copy this right here. Copy. I'm going to paste it in the description right there. Uh, the income account. So the income account is going to be the bank account. So that checking account we just had. So the, it's going to go right to there. And we spelled bounce check wrong. All right. Cool. So now we have that set. And this is going to be non-taxable. So make sure that you put non-taxable. It's going to be non-taxable. We're going to hit save and new because we're going to create a new one. All right. So the second one is going to be bounce check fee. Control all, paste right there, bounce check fee. And this is gonna be in our bank charges, bank charges and fees account. Okay? So the bank charges and fee, and this is also going to be non-taxable. All right, so now we're gonna hit save and close. Cool. Now we have that. All right. So now we need to create a new invoice and get that out to mom so we can get our money. So we're gonna go over here to new. You're gonna click invoice. All right, so you're gonna create a new invoice. You're gonna create it to mom, all right? Then we're gonna, this is where we're gonna put that bounce check. We're gonna put the bounce check at the top. It really didn't change it. All right, guys. All right, so we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna put the bounce check. I, it, it bugs me that it's unspelled, so let's, Let's fix that real quick. We're gonna fix that. We're gonna go to products and services. Uh, bounce check. We're gonna edit that, and then bounce check. See, we uh, we sell this to our customers, and it is non-taxable. Non-taxable. Bam. Now we're on. Now we're on track. All right. Bam. Now we're we're gonna hit save and close on that one. Cool, bounce check. So now we're gonna hop back into where we're just at. We're gonna create that invoice uh, for mom. Mom better pay us our money. So we're gonna have that bounce check. And what that bounce check amount was $5.41, right? It's gonna be that $5.41. So whatever that bounce check amount was, that's what we're going to come back to, okay? And then we have that bounce check fee for twelve dollars okay so the bounce check fee for twelve dollars and we're now we're going to hit save and close so now we're going to go back to the dashboard and you can see now that 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 the transactions kind of just balanced out so we we told quickbooks hey these transactions balanced out you know it's recorded now so now our bank balance should be zero but it's not because we also got hit with a $12 expense so we're also gonna have to put that in QuickBooks so we can do that by going you're going to go to new expense right and then who's the payee which is our checking account we'll call it the bank right the bank so whatever you bank with that's what you're gonna put it with whatever you bank with so you have the banking, the payment account is checking, and this is gonna be bank charges and fees, and that amount that the bank charged us was 12 whole dollars. And then you're gonna put um, the reference number, you can put one, which was the check number that bounced, 
And then in the description, you're gonna put bounce check from mom. Bounce check from mom. And now you're going to hit save and close. And there you can see, now you can see, hey, our bank is negative $12 which is exactly what our what our bank looked like. It's negative $12 because, you know, the we said the money was coming in, but it really came out and the bank also charged us negative $12. So that's how that looks like. And it's gonna clear out when mom pays us that, pays us that check. So pays that invoice for that negative $12 and then also pays her original invoice. So let's look at that right now. So we're gonna to go to customers because we have to, we also have to reset what's called the aging on the invoice. So, oh, okay. So you see right here, this, this is the first invoice that she paid. This is the first invoice that she paid, but really she didn't pay it. So we're gonna to have to reset that. So we'll go to the payment right here. We'll go, we'll go to that payment and we'll apply it to the second invoice. Not that first one. We're gonna apply the payment to that invoice and we're going to hit save and close. Are you sure? Yeah. So now you can see that the open balance that mom owes us is still $17.41, which is at $12. So this invoice, that, the second invoice that we created is that $12 expense that we encouraged from the bank. The first invoice is still that five forty one because now it says overdue. So you know, originally when we created that second invoice, it said, "Hey, you know, you still have time." But now it's really overdue. So now when we go back to let's say our dashboard, we still have that negative twelve dollars. So let's say she actually pays us now and she writes off the the check for the whole entire seventeen dollars and forty one cents that she owes us. So just like earlier, we're gonna go to receive payment. Right, we're gonna select the customer, which is mom. Oh, not mo, not mo comma. It's we're gonna select mom. There, there. And then there's two invoices that these are the two invoices came up. These are the open balances. So let's say she pays us with a check, with check number two, and we're gonna deposit it into our checking account. So we're gonna get a picture, snap it, put it in our checking account. And she, the total check was seventeen forty one. So you see if I click this, QuickBooks automatically put that. So, and then we'll just hit save and close. And now you see our check-ins back to that $5.41 where it should be in the first place. So guys, what you just learned in this video is what to do if you get a bounce check, how to record it, how to handle it the proper way to avoid a big mess at the end. If you don't really follow this exact process, you could have complications in your QuickBooks that could eventually lead to a cleanup. Hope you enjoyed the video.